Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. I'm Dom and today we're here in my garage doing, or unit, whatever you want to call it, the round building, uh, <laughs> doing some suspension work on the Noggy. Now, as you can see here, I've got some Bilstein B14 coilovers. Now these are meant to be very, very good. Um, apparently they're made using and tested on the Norchcliff, the Nurburg ring, which I'm a massive fan of. If you didn't see my video, go check that out. Last year in the V6, having a lovely time. Um, and basically, the only reason I want to address this, because this is currently on Bilstein um, B12 kit, which is the IBAC springs and the Bilstein shock absorbers, is because of this gap. Now, for a lowered car, that almost looks factory. I mean, you can get like easily three fingers in there. I mean, no one wants a three finger gap in their suspension when they're lowering their car, do they? I mean, come on. Um, so we're going to try the Bilstein coilovers because I have the availability of adjustment so I can play with the height. Um, I'm not going to show you a full how-to guide. I'm just going to kind of show you through the process. You can enjoy watching it and then we'll have a look afterwards and see what it looks like. Now I'm also going to tell you about a couple of tools and a couple of little tricks I've learned along the way which make this a little bit easier. Um, but I won't go into a full how-to. I have done some videos on that already. Um, so I won't bore you with that, but I thought you'd love to see what this looked like when it's finished. Right, before we get stuck into it, let's jump to the intro. So before we get stuck in, let's talk tooling. Now, of course, you're going to need a jack and some stands to do this nice and safe. Um, you're going to need a socket set. I recommend half inch just because these are quite large bolts. Um, a torque wrench, breaker bar, some WD-40 or equivalent and a wire brush because what you want to do is clean off the heads of any bolts that look a bit furry because if you just start trying to get them undone, you're going to pull all that dirt and all that crap through them bolts, it's going to make it dead hard, you might end up snapping a bolt and that is the last thing you want. Now, the tool and that I recommend for everyone, you get these on Amazon, eBay, probably your local motor spares shop, um, is this little bad boy. Now this is a VAG suspension tool, I'll show you a picture of it. And this has like an oval shape. And what you do is you put it into the back of the front suspension hub, turn it 90 degrees. And all it does is allows the hub to be open just enough. The shock drops out and it literally falls out. I will show you a video of it when I do mine. Um, honestly, the amount of times I used to spend with a, a 12 pound hammer, just beating on the top of the hub, like we're talking 15 years ago, um, on all manners of old cars that were seized solid. And this thing, honestly, with a bit of spray, that twisted and it just falls out. Um, so I'll get this jacked up, get the wheels off, and then we'll have a look what we're swapping it with. Okay, so got the shock, the new one in. Um, just about to obviously put it into the hub. So again, take your tool in the bottom. Let me try and get the camera set up so you can actually see this because it's well hard to do with one hand. Right, let's tilt you up a bit more. There you go. So, get the tool in, into the bottom, because that's the shock doesn't come down that far, into the gap, and then get it so it's tight, and then you just want it, it does about just under a quarter of a turn, and it'll open up. And then what you'll be able to do is you'll see the hub go loose, and you'll just be able to wobble this in nicely. Might need a little bit of spray. I had to give it a little bit of a clean up. Let that work in. And it should lift it up a bit. Just fully make sure you guide in this, this bit of the back nicely. So it lines up. And then it should. There she goes. And that's it. Perfect. So now the complete strut is on, it's fitted. It's in, I'm gonna put the covers on these just to protect them any further for any rust and damage and dirt and whatever. Um, I thought I would show you through um, the brake ducting system. Now that goes through this pipe here, which is currently pushed out of the way slightly, this pipe there, and it brings air round here and then up and it puts it onto a port which is welded onto the back of this. It's a custom made back plate. And what that does is it allows to push air right into the center of the disc so then it gets pushed up through the veins, thus cooling them down. Now this is not necessary on a road car. However, on a track car, it is immensely important to be able to cool your brakes because otherwise you'll boil your fluid, the pedal will hit your floor, 
and then you'll be hitting someone else or a wall or a barrier or something like that, which you do not want to do. So for track purposes, that is ideal. You can make them yourselves, a bit fiddly, takes a bit of time, but take an old shield and sort of mock something up. Uh, make sure you take your um, brake bracket pipe with the clip and um, this cable ties just to stop that dropping forward if it ever came loose. Um, make sure you clip these in and everything's back to normal. Test fit your wheels. Now I've already done that just to make sure that the wheels didn't hit that because if you go too low, that would actually hit the back of my wheel. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely worth test fitting one before you go around and swap everything else on the car. Um, I'm gonna go around and do the other side now and then I'll show you the coilover socks and then hopefully we'll be ready to get it down on the ground before we do the back and we'll see how it looks. So I thought I would finish um, by doing the last little bit of this on the ramp because, well, I've got it, so I may as well use it. Um, I wanted to share with you these fantastic things. They're called coilover covers. Now, if you have any kind of coilover, whether they are budget or they are high-end, 2,000-pound, fully dampening adjustable KWs, you are going to want a set of these. Now, they start from, I think, just under 20 quid a pair. Now they are gonna save those beautiful threads underneath. They're also gonna protect the springs from stone chips and things like that. And it will extend the life of your coilovers. Now, if you've ever had to adjust a coilover that's been on a car for any length of time at all, unless you live in the nicest conditions, you will struggle with the rust on the threads, the corrosion, um, the nuts will be stuck together. So what you can do is use these um, coilover covers. They're from coilovercovers.com. They do a selection of red, blue, black, camo and they can also do custom ones and they simply just velcro over the top of your springs and because they're material they're flexible they won't affect your suspension but they will keep those coilovers nice and clean so in six months time when you buy different wheels and you want to fit um, you want to fit them and they're touching the arch you want to raise it a little bit or you want to go for a geo and get it set up and they maybe want to lower it a little bit they'll come over and they'll go oh look custom coilover covers beautiful um, this is not a sponsored advert. I just wanted to share it with you because I think these are super important. Um, and if you've ever had to adjust suspension, you'll be running to buy a set of these right now. So, suspension's fully fitted. Um, brake duct doesn't foul the wheel. Now, um, if you're gonna do any modifications, always, always, always test fit first because you never know everything is gonna fit 100% of the time. Um, what I had to do with these was put the wheel on and then just put one cable tie and go in from underneath and just pull it down so it doesn't touch the wheel. Then when I put the wheel on in a minute, um, before I lower it down and we'll, we'll do our finger inspection, um, you wanna be able to put your hand around the back and just, if you can, just put your hand in and make sure that this is not gonna foul on the wheel because the last thing you want this to do is rub on the inside of your wheel. You also need to check, now this depends on the size of your wheels, whether you have spaces and all that kind of stuff. Um, these nuts do sit quite predominant um, I'm just going to spin that round. These nuts do sit quite predominant here and on my wheels, because I've got 8.5 inch quite low offset wheels, um, if I go any lower with this nut, because I do still have some more thread remaining, that will touch my tyre, which you do not want. Um, so a lot of the time, if you're using standard wheels or 8J wheels with some spacers, you will not have an issue, you won't come anywhere near this, you can come right down to the bottom, scrape your sump on the floor, not an issue. Um, but like I said, test fit, test fit, test fit. Um, if, you, if your wheels are quite in and they're quite close to your shock absorber anyway, be really careful when fitting coilovers. But like I said, just take your time, test fit. Worst case, it doesn't fit, you need to buy some spaces. It's not the end of the world. Um, but most of you, if you've watched the Parabros, probably already have them. Right, I think I should throw the wheel on and then we should get it down and see what the gap's like. So, what do you think? It's down. Um, I always, whenever it's been lowered or had any suspension, it's always a good idea to go around the block maybe, check it, nothing rubs first. It's certainly a lot more steady than it was before. Um, so now we have, I realized I left my key in the car, never do that. <laughs> Here's where I was turning the wheels. Um, so yeah, now it's completely down like to take it for a little drive, let it settle. Um, but the all important test was four fingers before. 
definitely not four. It's definitely not three. Ah, oh, two fingers, perfect. So we've taken off probably an inch, which is the perfect gap. Now, if you stand and look back, it sits absolutely level. Again, two finger gap at the back, perfectly flat and this is going to be so much nicer on corners yes it's going to be a harder ride because before i had um, uprated shock absorbers and springs now i'm going over to coil over um, shock absorbers with a spring over the top so the springs are a lot smaller therefore it doesn't have as much flex we'll take some of the comfort out but bearing in the mind that this is fully poly bush there is not a single rubber bush on this car it is gonna be so tight, so precise on the steering. I'm already really, really excited to get out and give this a drive. Um, but I wanted to share the experience with you because like anything, it's the journey. Um, this car has come from being an absolute stock mess to a modified mess. Um, <laughs> it needs a wash. But I am absolutely loving the stance of the car now. I'm gonna come stand back with you. Oh yeah. That sits absolutely perfect. I didn't want too low, um, mainly because I'll probably end up on the grass at a track day. Um, no, but <laughs> it's still usable. It's still gonna be used regularly. I wanna be able to take it over speed bumps. I don't want it to get stuck. It needs to be usable. Um, and plus stupid low actually makes the performance worse. So this is a, a nice compromise. Now the suspension is complete. That's pretty much the under train done. What I'm gonna be doing now, I've got the ramp is I'm going to be under sealing it now. A company called Lano Guard have sent me a load of stuff um, because I said to them, I want to under seal my car and they gave me two options. Um, I'm going to be doing, this is called Carbusonic Lano Clear Chassis Wax. Um, I've got two options. I've got a clear one and I've got a black one. Um, I'm going to be doing one on this TT and one on the Glacier Blue TT. Um, and this will just protect the car. So if you've done all your hard work, you've done a full upgrade on the underside, maybe you've changed the arms, changed the bushes and all that kind of stuff, or you've repainted your front and rear subframes, this will protect that for the foreseeable. It'll also cover all of the um, undercarriage of the car, all the, the actual bodywork underneath. Um, stop stone chips, stop rust, stop the salt getting on there and all of that good stuff. Dead easy to apply. Um, you literally just have this and you put that in and then just walk around and just lovely jubbly. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do for a really long time and I should have done it a really long time ago because I want this car to last me as long as possible. I don't want to be welding it. They're pretty good usually. Um, yeah, they rust here and I'm going to get this dealt with because these seals are a bit knackered. Um, but as a whole, the car is still very strong. So it'd be nice to protect it um, for the future plus all of our hard work um, doesn't want to go to waste, does it? So let me know what you think of the stance. Would you have gone lower? Would you have gone higher because you prefer an OEM sort of fitment? Um, let me know. Right. Thanks for watching, guys. And until the next one, bye for now.